In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called using an equilibrium constant to predict the direction of a spontaneous reaction. In this problem, you'll be given a balanced equation and a value of Kc. And then you're going to be given three different sets of data for that particular equation. The data sets are going to include the concentrations for all of the reactants and products in the equation, and you are going to be asked to predict if or which substances will increase in concentration, which will decrease in concentration, and which will have no change at all. To solve this problem, we're going to be calculating the value of Q for every single one of these different data sets. Q is calculated the same way that we would calculate K, meaning that we're going to write an equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression is gonna have the products over the reactants, every one of them raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. And fortunately for this one, all of our stoichiometric coefficients are one, so we don't really have to worry about any of those exponents. So we're gonna start by writing our equilibrium expression, our Q uh, equation, that's gonna be BF3 NH3 over BF3 times NH3. And then what we're going to do is plug in the values of the concentrations of all of these substances for our first data set. The BF3NH3 concentration is 1, and the BF3 concentration is 0.17, and the NH3 concentration is 0.35, and then we will go ahead and solve this on the calculator. So I'm just going to fit it down here. And then once we get this calculated, we're going to compare this value to the value of Kc. So 1 divided by 0.17 times 0.35 is 16.8. 16.8. Our value of K is 1.1. And so what we want to do is compare the Q to the K, because that gives us some information about what's going to happen to all of the substances in this system. If Q is equal to K, then that means that the reaction is in equilibrium, and that means that there won't be any change at all, because it's already in equilibrium. Nothing's going to happen. If Q is, let's see, in this case, our Q is not equal to K, our Q is much bigger than K. So if Q is bigger than K, that means that our reaction is too far to the right. We have too much product. So that means that our products need to decrease. And it's kind of hard to see the arrow the way that I drew it there. The products need to decrease and their reactants need to increase. Our Q is too large. That means we have too much stuff on the right-hand side. We need to shift this reaction to the left. We need to decrease the amount of product, and we need to increase the amount of reactant. And then if we have the opposite situation where Q is too low, that means that we need to increase the amount of our products, and we need to decrease the amounts of our reactants. That. Okay, so for this one, our Q was too big. That means our products need to increase. Uh, our product is down here, and our reactants need to... I wrote that backwards. Our product needs to decrease, and our reactants need to increase. And then we're just going to repeat this problem for the other two data sets. So for our next data set, we want our BF3 and H3 concentration on top. That is 0.83. Our BF3 on the bottom, our BF3 is 0.78, and our NH3, which is 1, we're going to work this out and see what we get, 0.83 divided by 0 0.78, 0 0.83 divided by 0 0.78 works out to be 1.06. When we round it so that it has the same number of decimal places as the K value, it's 1.1 equal to k, so which means there will be no change at all because it's equal to k. Let's look at the last one. So the BF3 NH3 concentration is 0.54, the BF3 concentration is 0.68, and the NH3 concentration is 0 0.81, 0 0.54 divided by 0.63 times 0.81 is 
1.06 again. When we round it again to just one decimal place, we end up with the same value of k, which means it's already in equilibrium, no change.